everyone, we are live. The camera is there. <laughs> no, the camera is there. We are live. Yes, we are live. Um, first of all, let me know if the audio is all right, if you guys can hear me properly. So just let me know in the comment section. All right, so we have Paul Wang, my friend here. He's also an instructor at the Urban Sketches Symposium this year at Amsterdam. He has taught at many symposiums before in Singapore, in Manchester, in Barcelona, Barcelona. Um, in Manchester, Chicago, Porto, and then this year I'm going to Amsterdam. Okay, so he is very... In I've been to seven symposiums. He yes. is a very experienced um, instructor and I am just a sketcher when I go overseas for such symposium. So uh, let me know if the audio is alright, if you can hear me clearly. So if you have any questions relating to the symposium, just append the question with big letters Q and so that I can spot the questions very easily. So I have prepared some questions for Paul already. So what can people expect when they go for such a symposium, especially if they are the first time uh, going to, the, to such a symposium? You can expect to see a lot of people and also being summer is going to be full of tourists. So you will see people everywhere, especially sketcher with their sketchbook, sketching everywhere in the coffee shop, the restaurants. Um, basically everywhere. So do you think there is any anxiety when going to such a symposium, especially for example if you are really a beginner, you don't know how to draw, if you are just the first time, do you think some, what do you think, what is your advice for such beginners? Um, if this is your first symposium, I do ask that you do some research about the place, the location, get to know the city that you're going to visit, especially if it's your first time, uh, so that you have less jitters, um, settle all the logistics, you know, where you're staying, what train you're going to take, so mm. that it takes your mind off, you know, all the logistics and focus on the sketching. And it's good to warm up, you know, come a day earlier mm. maybe, and you just start, you know, practicing on location, get your drawing going, and hopefully that will put you in the mood for um, drawing more actively during the symposium. Yeah. yeah, I think going one day or two days earlier to warm up, to walk around the place, to get the vibe, um, I think that is quite useful. So for people who attend workshops, you have taught in many workshops mm. before, so what are some of the things that people can look out for when they are attending workshops? Like do you, uh, people um, difficult to teach or do they come with some preconceived um, conception or some notion? Mm -hmm. Okay, first thing if you are attending our workshop, please be on time mm. and please know where to meet because it's quite easy to get lost, especially if a new place. So make sure you find yourself uh, to the meeting point on time, meet your guide, meet the instructor and then we will walk to the location as a group. So if you are late, you're going to have trouble you know, finding out where we are. And sometimes we may have to shift because a uh, possible change in weather or you know, the police comes. So you want to be with the group. Um, and as we come for the workshop, you know, especially if you are new to instructor, be open-minded. You know, there'll be something for you to learn. Uh, be ready to also you know, interact with your classmates for that three hour. And that's going to hopefully increase mm. the fun and help you enjoy you know the workshop as well and you will see you know very uh, advanced uh, experienced sketcher new sketcher so they all be in a mixed level class and we want to make sure that you know everybody gets something out of it as well so if you're new don't be afraid don't be shy mm. to say hi to a more experienced sketcher next to you yeah let me move the camera so Paka is adjusting, so again if you have any questions for us live right now, you can uh, post any question about the symposium so that you know we can answer
Parker is going to adjust. So if you have your cards, it's going to be so much easier for you to keep in contact, keep in touch with you know, other schedule that you will need. So if you have time, you can go pick it up. If not, you can do a homemade version. You know, just write your name. the mic. Mic. Okay, I think should be all right now. Okay, we're back. Oh, sorry about that. I think yeah, it could be the cable. Yeah, you were saying about name cards. Yes. So get your name cards if you can, homemade or printed online, doesn't matter, so that you can keep in touch with your other sketches, and they will be swapping cards with you. So we like to do this during the symposium. You can bring along your postcards uh, with your own sketches on it as well. Mm. So really good for um, new friends. Yeah. Alright, let's... Uh, you, if you guys have any questions, you can post it on the uh, live chat. Just append your questions with big letters Q and... So... Where is this going to be? We're going to Amsterdam this year, just in case so you are unaware. A, there's a question from the Hajumos. How many cards do you need when you go for such a symposium? How, how many cards? How many cards should you prepare? Um, well, we, uh, we've sold 800 tickets. So if you're going to meet 799 friends or maybe half, you probably need you know, a good half a dozen, dozen you know, cards to give away. Right? So it depends on you know, how many friends you will meet. But just know that it's going to be uh, 800 participants this year at the symposium. any questions all right okay um, hello everyone for those who have just joined this is Paul he is one of the instructors at the symposium so just ask us any questions relating to the urban sketches symposium which is going to happen at the end of this month in Amsterdam I will be answering the questions from the perspective of a sketcher who is going there to sketch with friends and he will be answering hmm. from the perspective of an instructor all right, so um, what is the most um, exciting thing about going to such a symposium? What's the most exciting thing? Meeting new friends and meeting old friends. So it's like, you know, a, a family reunion where you will meet um, friends that you, you got to know many years ago online. Um, you have never met in person and that's the excitement of meeting them in person. And some of you, you will get to meet me and meet Parker as well in Amsterdam. So don't be shy, uh, don't be shy to say hi. Um, and also the ability to sketch, you know, in a new location like Amsterdam is really quite exciting. Yeah, you see the, the sights, the sound, uh, you get to see um, new things that you've never encountered before. So I think those are some of the things that excite me when I visit a new city. Yeah, I think it's really exciting to see people, sketches that you have been following online. You follow their art. Uh, blog, follow their work, follow their Instagram pages, and to be able to see them live in person, um, go talk to them. It's going to be very fun. It's going to be an incredible experience. And also ask for their sketchbooks if it's convenient. Mm. Take a look at their sketchbooks and browse through the pages. Um, it's one thing to see their work online. It's another thing to see their work in real life and where you can ask them questions. Mm. So I have a question. If you haven't purchased the workshop pass, you can meet us in the afternoon because this year being our 10th anniversary, afternoon activities are all free. Mm. So you can come to um, the venue, browse the books, um, the art stalls, buy materials, meet us, have a chat, and those are absolutely free. The paid uh, uh, part is only the morning workshops and the opening and the closing uh, reception. Those are um, for participants. So if you, if you uh, want to meet us and you don't have a pass, come in the afternoon after the morning workshop and we'll be uh, around to chat with you. So the public sketch box will be free? Yes, in the afternoon. Yeah, there will also be some drink and draw sessions 
Yeah. Um, you can join other sketchers who are not participating in workshops or lectures. You can join them at the drink and draw sessions. Anyway, there will be a lot of sketch walks, sketching sessions that are free all around the whole day mm. from day to night. So uh, just look out for them on the Urban Sketches Symposium Amsterdam page to find out where are the actual locations. There are designated locations, so those would be the more popular places. Alright, let's see, I have another question. Now that, uh, now that there are so many of us, we have seen smaller regional symposium link to symposiums and the Asia link crop up. Do you think that's going to start happening in more regions and more frequently? Um, yes, um, no, I think people are more excited about you know, sketching as a group. So this year we are seeing a few events, regional events, other than the international symposium. So uh, some of us in uh, Asia will be going up to Hanoi for the Asia Link in October. Mm -hmm. um, I think Baka will be there. And then some of us will be part of the Korea event in uh, September. And I think there are a few more that's happening. So, you know, keep in touch by going to the, our blog, our international website, urbansketcher.org uh, to find out more about what's going on uh, this year and possibly next year as well. And I'll be in Brisbane in October for the uh, Brisbane Sketch Fest. So if you are living near to Brisbane, hopefully you'll come and check us out as well. Yeah, I think there are the two main big sketching uh, symposiums are actually the Urban Sketcher Symposium which happens in July and the other big one is the Asia Link Sketch Walk which usually, which usually happens in October if I remember correctly. So these are the two big international ones but there are from what I have seen smaller regional uh, workshops and symposiums coming up like the recent one in Bali mm -hmm. and wow well, there's one coming up in Taiwan as well and I have I see a lot of workshops, like official workshops that are being publicized and advertised on the Urban Sketches blog and also the e-magazine. So it is really becoming very popular and yeah, if you want to attend such workshop, you can follow the Urban Sketches main blog to watch out and look out for such workshops. Okay. Someone is asking what sketchbook should you bring mm. to the symposium? Uh, it's also going to you know, involve what materials will you bring, so do you have any mm. advice? For sketchbooks, I recommend you bring some things that you have already used before. Do mm. not buy a new brand or new type of paper. Go with something that you have used before because you wouldn't know how that paper will perform when you are overseas. And if the paper performs badly, it's it may be difficult to find the paper that you want so do bring the true tried and tested uh, equipment with you like your pens, your watercolor um, it's not I wouldn't advise you to test new materials when you're overseas unless mm -hmm. those uh, supplies are provided for you by the instructor but otherwise if you're sketching for yourself bring the sketchbooks and the pencils, pens, watercolor that you have been using all along that you are familiar with. So I make my own sketchbook because it's a lot cheaper mm -hmm. and I like to create a, an accordion style sketchbook so they are one long wow. you know, piece of paper they are connected. Some of us will like most skin, still and burn. So you know buy something that you know it's um, it's something that you like to use that you're comfortable with and not too big because it's gonna it's gonna be a busy place. You wanna make sure that you don't go into trouble, you know, for spreading all your materials out. Um, travel lights, that's my advice. So you know, um, don't so like maybe a couple of pens that you really really like, uh, one brush, two, you know, so don't bring everything that you have. And uh, some of us will have small palettes like that. That's really really useful. Okay, for an uh, event like that, so that you know you can travel light, take care of your belongings, and, and don't lose anything during the event. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I do recommend you travel light because it's going to be very tiring if you carry a lot of stuff, and it doesn't mean that you carry and bring along all these items, supplies, you will use everything. So just bring along the sketchbooks and pens that you use most often, mm. and keep your bag light so that you don't get tired so easily because 
um, the whole sketching thing it's going to last from morning to night <laughs> so yeah so someone's asking um, size um, of sketchbook so it depends on the workshop mm -hmm. that you're attending so some instructors will tell you that they need a certain size paper uh, you know a3 panoramic mm -hmm. or square so you have to find out the details mm -hmm. uh, general sketch general sketching I tend to like to keep it fairly small so that I can put it on my lap uh, I don't take up too much space and I can travel light as well so I think those are my criteria for mm. choosing the appropriate sketchbooks yeah, yeah and if, uh, if the instructor did not mention what type of watercolor paper to bring I recommend you bring 100% cotton watercolor paper because um, the watercolor will perform very predictably on such paper so less things will go wrong so do bring 100% uh, cotton watercolor paper if you can afford it. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, I have this question by Linnell Joyce. Has it been determined yet where the Sketches Symposium will be next year in 2020? Um, <laughs> I can't tell you because but that's you a know. secret. You don't no, no, I you don't know. know. But it will be revealed <laughs> on the very last day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we tend to rotate the location, you know, around the continent so that it's yeah. evenly spread out. So you can do your math and count the number of continents we've been to we know what have we what where have we not been mm. so you probably will have an answer mm. yeah. yeah so I also don't know the answer to that so for those who have just joined Earth in this live stream today we are talking about Urban Sketches Symposium in Amsterdam so ask us any questions related to that and we have one question the Hachu Jemos do you need a folding stool or a portable chair um, in my opinion, yes, because um, I don't like to sit on the ground and I, my legs go numb if mm. I sit with my legs crossed on the ground for too long. So yes, a uh, small affordable camping stool would be very, very helpful as well. And I'm not sure about Paka. Uh, I definitely highly recommend bringing a chair along. Yes. Because uh, having a chair along, you can sit anywhere you like. You don't have to depend on public benches if there are any public benches and also if the weather is that if the floor is wet, you have your portable stool, you can put it anywhere. And it's way more comfortable to sit and draw at, compared to standing and draw. And you will get less um, tired, which is great because you need all the energy for the four or five days you are there at the symposium. Okay, so um, if you've never been to Amsterdam, uh, make sure you check the weather forecast. Mm -hmm so that you are ready for any weather that you know may come your way it's going to so for some of us it may mm. be chilly you know especially coming from singapore going to amsterdam you know it can be a big change mm. so we want to make sure we bring the appropriate amount of clothes keep warm stay dry and there may be some rain so uh, remember your umbrella if you want to or a rain jacket will be very helpful um, and definitely kind of know uh, what you're bringing so that you're not bringing too much mm. you're not you know bring enough mm. you know so that that's going to make you more comfortable yeah. and if you have any questions relating to weather and climate you can ask your questions at the urban sketches symposium the facebook page i'm sure there are people from netherlands um, they will be very helpful at answering them because i've never been to amsterdam before i have uh, no idea uh, how cold, how windy or rainy it's going to be. Yeah. Um, another good item to bring is a waterproof hat. Yeah, uh, so the hat can protect you against the rain if it drizzles and also protects you against the sun when you're drawing. Prevents you, prevents the sunlight, prevents too much glare from going into your eyes which can be very uncomfortable. Next question from Linnell Joyce. Are all the sketcher workshops in English? Yes, all the workshops are conducted in English, but there will be a local guy, a local assistant, okay, a local sketcher that will assist the instructor. So the, the assistant may be able to translate English into Dutch, or if the assistant speaks more than one language, mm. you know, you'll probably get uh, more translation. But Predominantly, we will, we will be teaching in English, right? So if you need um, translation, go find out, you know, what you can do about it beforehand. 
All right, let's see what other questions. Mm. Okay. Um, so, how to break the eyes if you see a sketcher that you are following online, where you see him sketching there or see her sketching there and you want to approach her? How would you break the eyes if you are someone who is very shy? Uh, I'm very shy, so we will have to slowly sneak in, just look over the shoulder and then catch our attention, don't, don't be sneaky though and then when they look at you, just say hi, how are you and then just tell them your name and then take it from there yeah, and then you know, ask them, you know, what are you drawing, you know, can you tell me a little bit more mm -hmm. so, you know, I like to take, you know, that slow approach not run up to someone and say hi, you know, that's quite shocking. So, you know, walk up to me gently as well. <laughs> yeah, my tip would be um, always ask what pen or what watercolor they are using, or what sketchbook they are using. Yes, yeah. yeah. You can discuss the brush. We like to talk about yeah. the brush. And then, you know, that's a really way to break the eyes, you know, ask them, you know, what's, what's your favorite brush, you know, any tips, I'm sure they'll be happy to, you know, um, talk about this. Share well. with you. Yeah. yeah. Talking about art supplies is what uh, binds yes. sketches together. Right. You cannot go wrong with talking about art supplies. And also there will be a lot of booths selling art supplies, yes. sponsored booths selling art supplies as well. Yeah. So do you have any tips on what to buy at these sponsor booths or when you should buy them. Usually for me, I will buy my items on the last day so that uh, I don't have to keep too many things in the first few days. Yeah, if you are bringing limited luggage space, just pace yourself so that you don't buy everything on the first day. And know that you, you are, for those who have signed up for the workshops, mm -hmm. if you are a workshop participant, you'll be getting a goodie bag. Uh, so the good bag has quite a few, you know, lovely items every year. Mm. So that will add to the weight, couple of mm. sketchbooks. So you want to make sure you know that. So uh, day one, just look at what's available, you know, budget your time and your money. And then maybe at some point you go and, you know, pick it up along the way and see what you need as well. Uh, for me, um, it's the best place to buy brushes because uh, we know some of the good names will be uh, down. They will be selling. Uh, brushes and you know usually we get a really good discount mm. so you want to put your money there and you know, at least that's what I'm gonna do mm, yeah I think in Manchester uh, I saw Rosemary and Escoda brush if I remember correctly so someone said that the temperature now is 20 degrees 20 Celsius in uh, Amsterdam so that's actually quite cold for me so I'm definitely yeah. going to need to bring a jacket a waterproof jacket. Yes. Uh, so um, someone's asking umbrella. Sometimes umbrella doesn't work oh, as yeah. when it's very very crowded. Mm. So a uh, rain jacket actually yeah. works better. Uh, having rain jacket definitely is better because it keeps your hands yeah. free. So you can, when it starts raining and you are you happen to be wearing a jacket, you can pack up everything and just run for yeah. the shelter. So that would be very convenient. Also have your waterproof hat and try to find a waterproof hat. Next question, what's the etiquette regarding taking photos and videos during workshops and other group events? So if someone in your workshop is taking a so lot of So I think that's a very, very good question and I hope you will all listen. Um, so if you do want to take photographs or videos of the instructor teaching during the mm -hmm. workshop, please, please, please uh, seek for permission. Ask the instructor very nicely if that's permissible. And then respect the uh, instructor's uh, uh, decision whether you should be taking pictures, video. Mm. So for me, um, I encourage students to take photographs for their own personal consumption. Videos, please give it to a couple of minutes, not the whole three hour workshop video. Mm. Uh, that's going to also be an uh, infringement of our privacy and we do cherish the, cherish the material that we prepare you know, for the workshop and mm. it's pretty, pretty exclusive to uh, the symposium as well. So if you do take videos of someone, take pictures of someone, please have the courtesy to you know, inform them, ask for their permission um, and, and that's going to you know, be very, very helpful as well. So we don't see our faces, our videos mm. suddenly appearing online without um, our knowledge. Yeah. What do you think? I think if you are just taking candid photos, it should be fine, right? 
if you are just teaching in front and I just happen to just take a photo for my remembrance sake, it should be fine. As long as you don't disturb the workshop, don't disturb other people, it should be fine. Yeah. And so um, yeah, so basic, basic courtesy, you know, so just um, go up to the person, the instructor, and then ask for permission. Just tell them that, you know, uh, you would like to take the pictures, the, the video for mm. your future learning, and if they agree, go ahead. If not, it's okay. You know, I'm sure we can find other ways to help you, you know, uh, remember that uh, experience as well. Yeah, do ask permission first if you are not sure. And um, taking photos and videos, uh, actually, I would recommend you actually take notes while you are at the workshop rather than take photos and videos because you will be able to absorb more. Sometimes when you are taking photos and videos, your mind is not mm -hmm. concentrating on what the instructor is talking. So when you are taking notes, you are actually actively listening to what the instructor is saying. So and you write it down in your sketchbook, you may actually learn and absorb more. Yes. Yeah. So let's see if we have any other questions. Uh, which hotel to stay at when you're at the symposium? That's a difficult question because it has to do with your budget, mm, it has yeah. to do with um, how ready are you to walk, are you mm. comfortable riding the bicycle in Amsterdam, um, are you uh, comfortable taking the tram, the, the train mm. to the symposium venue. So. Mm. Uh, those are gonna affect you know your options. Uh, there are gonna, there are Airbnb close to the venue, so you can consider that as well. Mm. Uh, you can definitely share an apartment with uh, fellow sketches. You know, send them a message, put it uh, on the Facebook. Mm. Now, I'm sure someone may have a spare bed or mm. you know looking for a third or fourth person to join them to to defray the cost. So go say hi. Maybe that will work out for you as well. Mm. So for me, I like to reduce the public transport to the bare minimum so that I you know spend most of my time walking mm. and if you're not a really good cyclist please 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 be careful oh, yeah. when you cycle in Amsterdam because you know it's just a hazard for you if you are you know cycling with very experienced uh, local cyclists so that you also take care of yourself, you get into trouble and get knocked down. So that's my advice as well. Have you been to Amsterdam? Yes, I've been to Amsterdam. This is my second visit. Oh, so okay. I know how uh, proficient they mm. are as cyclists. So there are dedicated cyclists, a cycling lane. So you want to make sure that you look out for the bicycle coming your way. Um, they are, they are going to just ride because that lane is dedicated for mm. them. So if you are not proficient, mm. either you practice get to know the roads before you you know start cycling um, actively in Amsterdam but that's a good way to get around and see mm. the city as well but I like to walk yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, traffic conditions in every country is different so I think most importantly when you go to such a symposium stay safe um, if you are not sure ask your friends or ask the sketches from Amsterdam what's the situation like because um, in some countries they have the left hand drive, in some countries the right hand drive, in some countries people obey the traffic laws, in some countries they don't. So it's very important to uh, stay safe and watch and observe what's happening around before you make your move. Okay, let's see what's the next question. Hello, Johnny Ways from Spain. What about traveling with fountain pens? Do they need special? Um, do you need a special way to transport them? I heard that fountain pens they sometimes would um, uh, burst and the ink would splatter out because of air pressure and things like that. Yeah. So if you aren't gonna bring your fountain pen and you're taking a plane to Amsterdam, just make sure that you know you don't fill it full. So that you know, just in case air pressure changes, you know the ink will not, you know, ooze out. And then when you uncap the the pen for the very first time after landing, you will experience, you know, some leakage. So you want to prevent that by just making sure that you're just, you know, under uh, full, maybe ninety percent full of ink, and then you know, bring extra, uh, fill it up when you get there. Yeah, that's my advice. Yeah. And if you really, really think that the pen may leak, just put it in a Ziploc bag 
you know, so that you don't, it will not stain or, or leak into your mm -hmm. bag as well. Yeah, yeah a Ziploc bag would be quite safe. Usually for me, if I do bring a fountain pen or fountain pens to a symposium or overseas, I would try and keep my fountain mm -hmm. pen upright so that there's no way for the ink to uh, yeah. travel up. And uh, some of us may be asking, can I, can you travel with your watercolor? Mm. It, yes, you can as long as they are not liquid. Mm. Um, the airport airlines are fine with it, mm. right? So you can squeeze the paint out, mm. let it dry uh, so that it is solid, no problem traveling. Sometimes they will ask you to take out your metal palette, which sometimes they do mm. to me because it's a foreign object. Just mm. take it out, open it up, mm. um, and also uh, make sure that you don't have really sharp objects in your pencil case, like your pen knife, take it out, scissors, take it out, put it in your check-in yeah, luggage, if not, be in trouble. Pellet knives, I think, may not pass as well because some of those airport security, they may not recognize that as a pen, yes. pellet knife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lisette from Netherlands, she's Dutch. She say she said that she does that she don't dare to cycle in Amsterdam because there are tram tracks on in the road, so it can be scary if you get stuck in, if your tire gets stuck in the track. Yeah. yeah. So I guess when you are walking, you should also be careful about not like stepping into inside the trams tram track. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about bringing ink fountain pen inks to refill your fountain pen? How do you bring? Um, I put it in a small jar or something that's airtight, leak proof, put it in a ziplock bag in my uh, check-in luggage and I use a syringe okay, to fill my fountain pen with the ink mm. that, you know, it's, yeah. that I bring along as well. So those tiny cylindrical bottles. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can just bring enough for that few mm. days yeah. in Amsterdam. So actually for me, I used to bring fountain pens uh, for sketching but nowadays I just use the disposable pens. There is this Uniball Air uh, disposable rollerball pen that can draw thin and thick mm. lines. So I bring those pens over, I can bring one extra as a backup. Always bring backup pens and backup pencils just in case you lose something or just in case you run out of ink. So I bring those disposable pens so now I don't have to refill inks. And bring extra so for those who are on Instagram live, what we're doing is we're answering questions mm. pre-symposium uh, and if you have any question, go on to Paka Blot's uh, YouTube channel and then you can you know join us, mm. uh, especially if, if this is your first time you want to find out you know what to prepare, uh, you can do that. Okay, the watercolor case, this question is from Miria M. The watercolor case that you showed earlier is super compact. What is it? Oh, uh, this is called the jewel. Bejewel. Bejewel. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think this is called the bejewel case. We can put a link in later on mm. for you, right? Um, but you can also get a pill box. You know. Yeah. This box is quite. Uh, one thing I like about this box is. This box is very compact, very small, so it's very lightweight and doesn't add much to the weight of your mm. bag. In fact, I think it's even smaller compared to my wallet. Yeah, it's smaller than my wallet. But one thing I don't like about this is there is not a lot of mixing area. And if you're using such box, you would need to use a water brush or you may have to bring your own water container with water to wash your brush. So that is something that you have to think about when you are bringing things uh, overseas. Next question from Manatula. Wow. Um, last symposium, the instructors gave out helpful handouts and notes. Is this the general practice or is it up to the instructor? Um, as far as I know, most instructors will have some form of mm. uh, handout and notes for the participant. At least for me, you know, you get a couple of pages of uh, summary of the workshop so that you can fill in the blanks, follow along, and some of the things that you know I'm, t I'm teaching will be found in the notes as mm. well. So if, if there's no notes, fret not, you know, just take your own notes mm. and maybe that's the best way for you to remember you know, what's being taught as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I remember some instructors, they do give out, give out handouts, 
but some they do yeah. but the best is still take it in your own notes so that you can learn uh, while you are writing so next question we have um, well some of your names are very difficult to pronounce okay the question is even if I'm not attending the workshops can I participate in the USK symposium uh, yes so like we said uh, for this year we made it special uh, only workshops are paid for and those happen in the morning and then afternoon onwards um, those events like sketch walks coming to the venue mm -hmm. shopping at our stalls uh, all open mm -hmm. to the public mm -hmm. you don't have to sign up you don't have to pay you only pay for the openings reception if you want to join us or pay for the closing reception if you want to mm -hmm. you know be part of the closing ceremony mm -hmm. so come along if you are if you have just decided to join us in Amsterdam mm, yeah. the afternoons are free you can yeah. join a sketch walk come and say hi uh, meet new sketcher as well yeah. yeah so do join us for the sketch walks the public sketch walks mm. and I remember in the early years such uh, people who wanted to join the USK symposium they can just join it's just that they cannot attend the workshops but then in the recent years they started charging for uh, join even for public sketch works. Mm. I think that is to basically raise some money to offset the cost of hosting the symposium because it can get quite expensive mm. by paying for the rent for the place. Some of the halls that they rent it's very big. And also uh, during the opening and closing ceremony sometimes there is food so mm. sometimes uh, this involves cost as well. And for people who might want to join the closing ceremony um, I'm speak. I'm not exactly sure, but do they have to? Can they go or do they? Um, you will have to get a ticket. Yeah. Yeah. If especially if you're not a workshop participant, mm -hmm. you have to get a ticket. So go onto our website. You can find out the details mm -hmm. and yeah. you know sign up for the closing ceremony. You may yeah. be. You may have to pay in advance. I'm not sure yeah. you, you have to can pay, pay on location uh, good question you can yeah. raise the question on yeah. Facebook and let's uh, get you some answer there yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so the next question let's see um, yeah, today we are trying to answer symposium related questions so if you have other questions that are listed I will get to them in my own uh, video all right so let's see Oh yeah, regarding the which hotel to stay, the best hotel is the hotel. Yeah, the best hotel is the hotel right next to the main venue, so that you can wake up later, you can sleep longer, and if you want to take a break, you can just go back to your hotel, take a half an hour uh, nap, and then come back down again. So that's the best hotel. I don't have names for any hotel. This is applicable for any yeah. international uh, sketching symposium. So one thing I learned about uh, going to all these uh, symposiums is uh, get the hotel that's nearest, best if it's just next door. <laughs> okay, um, how to save money when you're going for such a symposium because the airfare can be quite expensive, the hotel, can be expensive, traveling can be expensive. So mm. how do you save money when you are uh, going for sessions? So, um, so you have to do a bit of budgeting. Mm. So first thing, good news mm. is you can drink tap water in Amsterdam. Mm. And the water quality is excellent. Mm. So there's no need for you to buy mm. a bottle of water mm. and throw more plastic into the ocean. So bring a lot of bottle, you know, fill it from the tap and it's perfectly safe to drink and that's going to save you some money mm. so you don't have to spend money on soft drinks okay yeah. and also there are a lot of cheap eats as well in uh, Amsterdam so you want to do your research find out where they are uh, and you can certainly go to the supermarket you know get uh, get some food pack your own lunch have a picnic you know during the sketch walk or the workshop that's a really good way to you know enjoy local food you know for a fraction of the price and you know still you know get to put your money elsewhere for art material or going to the museum as well uh transportation so like Paka said if you are staying closer to the venue you save money you know taking the tram or the train or if you are a good cyclist you know ride the bike it's gonna save you a lot of money mm. as well uh what else yeah. most of the sketching locations and workshops i believe are should be quite close to the main venue. Yeah, 
Yeah, Correct. Minimize, so it is uh, within a 15 minutes walk. Yeah. So you know we're not going to take any public transport. So that's going to you know help you you know uh, save, save some time, money, yeah, save, save time, time as save well. Money. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And regarding water, you can always boil your own water. Yes. And bring your own water bottle. As for food, uh, I recommend you ask the local sketches. I'm sure they will have a lot of recommendations yeah. for you. And for staying at hotel, you can um, maybe you can try Airbnb. Compare the prices of Airbnb versus hotel. And if you are staying at hotel, ask around if you can share the room with some other sketcher who is who happens to be going there. So that could be one way to save money. And for transport, again, um, especially if you are taking um, a bus or train from the airport to the location, maybe you can share um, with your friends to book a bus or a minivan. Maybe a um, the airport uh, transfer, the airport train is actually mm. quite affordable. Mm. So it's about four euro if I'm not mm. wrong one way. Mm. So you can protect that. Uh, you can buy a return ticket. You can buy a three day, one day, two day tourist uh, mm. transport card as well. Mm. So do some research. Uh, done that, you know, see what works for you and you can, you know, purchase what is uh, within your, your your budget as well. Yeah. And also if you, if you have decided that you are really going to go for the symposium, book your air tickets early so that you can save on the airfare because as the, as the date becomes closer to the actual symposium, the airfare has actually increased. Yeah. Yeah. Can be by a few hundred dollars. So, um, book your plane ticket early and also book I think for a hotel you can book later as well but um, I uh, think there's a lot of last minute deal now yeah. so go online and check whether hotel, you know there are any good deals I think hotel pricing is relatively uh, stable just that as it's closer to the date you may not find the vacancy yeah. Yeah, so that's the only uh, concern that I have oh uh, Please, if you are coming to Amsterdam, you must remember, do not take photograph of the girls working at the red light district. Oh. That is a no, no. So we will remind you again during the symposium, mm. but please, if you're listening to me, mm. do not take pictures of the girls mm. working at the red light district. Okay? You will get into trouble. Have you been to the main, main, main venue there? Uh, yes, I've walked around is that, that area. Is that area anywhere near the river? Yes, it is fairly oh. near and there will be a reminder when you mm. get there there are some parts of uh, uh, near to the Red Island district and mm. the venue there will be some parts that are going to be super super busy mm. so we'll remind you to stay clear of those mm. areas because uh, no sketching, sitting down uh, gathering groups will be allowed, so you will oh. hear more about that very very soon. Oh, okay. Yeah, no gathering of more than four person. Oh, right? So is is that the law there? Yes, because oh. they are trying to uh, you know ease the traffic, the traffic jams and stuff. Oh, like that, that place is yeah. actually very crowded. Correct. So oh. there will be some areas, few uh, streets. Mm. You will get to hear more about it, so that you are gonna be safe. Yeah. Okay, uh, is there any special marking destination lampposts or signboards that tell you that this is the real life district? Uh, or is it very obvious just by looking at it? Yes, it will be very obvious, yeah, but I'm sure you can you know, mm -hmm. find it on your Google Map where's the real life district. You know. So do check it out. Uh, oh, yeah. fun. Uh, speaking of Google Maps, it's also a very good way to find out where you can find food. Yes. Yes, and also a very good way to find out where the art shops are. Yes. But um, there will be a lot of art booths and sponsors at the main venue, so you can check out your supplies over there. Um, and I think some of the sponsors have already been listed on the mm. main Urban Sketches blog. It's on the site art on the site there. So once you see the name, for example. Um, Steel Member, I think, is one of the yeah. sponsors. Yeah. So if you see the brand or the name of the company, you can expect them to be selling uh, certain products there, which is uh, great. I usually spend a long time uh, looking at <laughs> going through the yeah. sponsor booths and also asking other sketchers what they are buying. And if you want to buy stuff, do bring a bit more money. Even if you don't buy stuff, you can still exchange your money back into your local currency. So to bring some extra cash if you can afford, just in case you would need or want to buy some good brushes that are available at good prices. 
Okay, so uh, for those who have just joined us, if you have any questions relating to the Urban Sketches Symposium, uh, do let us know in the comments section. Let's see if I have any more questions. Um, Alright. Um, so for those who are on uh, Instagram Live, I am doing a live interview with Paka and he's uh, going through some of the questions uh, especially if you are going to join us in Amsterdam for the very first time joining our symposium uh, there will be some questions that uh, we will answer and so you just go to uh, Paka Blog's uh, YouTube channel and join us on Facebook Live no, it, YouTube Live, sorry. YouTube Live YouTube and Live. Instagram Live on Paul's website Yeah. So what workshop are you teaching this year? Uh, I'll be reprising. Yes, so I'll be uh, reprising what I taught last year in Porto. So it'll be uh, beautiful eyes. So mm. we will be learning about looking at openings and windows, mm. uh, and we'll be looking more closely at you know mm. what uh, Dutch architecture and you know, what can we learn from mm. looking at windows as well. Mm. Yeah. So do you like suggest to your workshop? Um, your students, the items to bring, the supplies to bring? Um, yes, those, those are already on our mm. website so you can see some of the supplies mm. that uh, we will need and mm. I will be also supplying some of the uh, uh, art material and tools uh, especially for this workshop so that you mm. are gonna you know, try something new maybe and then see how that mm. works for you. Yeah. So do you list out the colors to bring? Uh, yes, I've listed out the color, but I will also be giving uh, each participant in my workshop mm. uh, a color sample of those mm. four colors that I'll be using extensively. Mm. So don't worry if you don't have mm. those colors that I've put down. Mm. Uh, you will be uh, testing out some colors mm. yeah, okay. during my workshop. Yeah, For the workshops, as I've said earlier, do bring good paper. <laughs> that is quite important. Okay. So if you have any more questions, if you let's see. There is a lot of information on the Urban Sketches Symposium page for the Amsterdam Symposium. The link will be in the video description below. And also they recently released the list of workshops that um, will be taught at the symposium and all the instructors mm -hmm. there so I do recommend you check out that uh, PDF or that web page I'll put the link in the video description below and if you don't see it, do remind me because uh, once you see the instructors, you can see the examples of their work you can see the workshops, the learning points, the highlights so it can help you decide whether or not you should want to join the symposium next year and also you can check out more works from the instructor as well. I will be covering the symposium uh, daily, so do look out for the daily videos. I will bring you behind the scenes to um, see what's happening over there, what's really happening over there. <laughs> okay, so do you guys have any questions relating to the symposium? If so, do let me know in the live chat. Has it stopped? Mm, yeah. So which? I'm, uh, uh -huh. no, I'm just looking if there are. Is blinking? Is it blinking? Oh, okay. That means the battery is dying. So I think we shall end our live streaming session right now, just before the camera goes black. <laughs> yeah. Right, so do you have any final thoughts to say before this? No, before the battery dies? Well, safe travels, I'll see you in Amsterdam and enjoy the workshop, enjoy the symposium. Alright, so thank you for watching. I don't think I can answer uh, Liz, Liz, Liz Johnson Johnston's question on sketching bicycle. Can you advise? Uh, what are some tips you can give on sketching bicycles? Uh, go talk to Rock Sketcherman. <laughs> He's teaching how to draw bicycles in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah.